<laughs> and we're back. <laughs> when we went to go see this on an earlier screen today because it didn't have um it didn't have a pre-screening last night for whatever reason. Um at first I was like, oh we probably won't need the light in the review, because you know, we'll be seeing it on like an afternoon screening or something. But it gets dark at five. All right. yeah. It starts getting dark at like five. We got out of the theater and I was like, how long was it? I that's thought it was like ninety minutes. Yeah, that's that was my reaction too. <laughs> we went to a three thirty showing of it because they were showing like a screening for it practically within every hour, pretty much. <laughs> um so here we are reviewing um Cosmos um, Scratastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> there's a uh, the, there's a scrat short in front of this movie that's pretty awesome <laughs> because we find out in this particular scrat short that scrat created the planet alignments and also is I believe the reason why the asteroid is now headed to Earth. To wipe out everybody that Scrat knows. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I thought this was a trailer at first, and I was like, after all this time, they're making another Ice Age? I thought they kind of wrapped things up in the last one. Well, and... if there's one, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they wrapped it up long before the fourth one. Well, um, like, they wrapped it up to the point that they, I can't imagine what another movie would even be about. If it's a scrap movie, I'm perfectly fine with it. it, it even in the fourth movie, that was the best part of the movie, when he finds Scratlantis, and the scrat, and the, like, the scrat with the toga opens the door and says welcome brother yeah. <laughs> that was worth the ticket price alone the rest of that movie sucked but in this one Scrap finds a spaceship ends up in outer space as you do and again he create not only creates the planet alignments but also the red spot on Jupiter <laughs> is the reason for Saturn having rings as well um, and again I'm pretty sure at the end of this one every single one of them is dead <laughs> <laughs> or are just about to fucking die. He sets a couple planets on fire too, so like I yeah. guess that's the reason Venus is uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. There was probably no life on there anyway. <laughs> Basically, long story short, Scrat is our entire reason for being. <laughs> Apparently, under all that fire, Venus is green though. You learn something new every day. Mm -hmm. They they probably learned that on Wikipedia. <laughs> I don't even know if that's true. I don't think there is like isn't I don't think is there a planet under Venus? I thought Venus was just like a ball of gas. No, yeah, it's a planet. I mean, but it's got like a it's surrounded by like a thin cloud layer and underneath it is like very hot gas. I'm trying to remember what happened in Venus and Furs. <laughs> and I'm also trying to remember the second grade. I should you learned that in second grade? Yeah, second grade was when we started learning about planets. I mean, I learned that there were some. Well, before second grade, I knew that there were planets, but second grade is when we, we actually started having specific, like, I think lessons that was on like each one of them. grade for me. That was second grade for me. Huh. Um, huh. This was in the 80s. Like, we were all on cocaine there. We learned things very fast. In the second grade? Yes. Start early. <laughs> I've actually looked like this since I was eight. <laughs> In fact, I'm 13. <laughs> Wasn't there somebody who actually believed me that I was like... 19? Yeah, yeah, that's right. I was... I'm 19 years old. I was seven when I did Freak Out. It's a very illegal film. Yeah, there were people being like... Oh, dude, not cool. I bought nudies, Rudies, and crudies. I didn't realize I was buying child pornography. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we went to go see Peanuts, <laughs> um, which is really good. Yeah, it was really cute. Yeah, this is actually probably the sweetest movie I've seen all year, next to Goodnight Mommy, of course. Yeah, that sounds adorable. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we were at an early morning, or not an early morning, well, early for us, but we were at it. We were at 3 30 is not that early for us. It felt early. Cause we did well, leave. That's because we stayed up until three a.m. last night. I was awake. I, f I think I was awake longer than that because I had to get the videos from last night rendered and uploaded while we slept. Um, so we went to the th same theater to see this that we saw Scouts Guide, which was the Bel Air Theater over on Eight Mile, 
um, which was less desolate today than it was when we went to go see Scout's Guide, probably because there's now movies playing that people actually want to see. I love the sign for this theater, by the way, that says, Bel Air Theater, digital projection, new releases, nothing in 3D. We saw this movie in 2D, which is fine. Um, yeah, the people in front of us were like, where's our 3D glasses? They told me this movie is in 3D, and I'm like, I feel like that is false. I should probably not go to this theater. That looks like it's from 1989. Like, no shit. This theater reminded me of, like, the theater I saw Bon Voyage Charlie Brown and Don't Come Back in. Um pretty much right down to they had the little movie fact slips. I didn't know they still made those. I've never seen those. They used to have those in Springfield, like, when I was growing up. I haven't seen them in, like, uh, 15, 20 years, maybe? Um, but, yeah, they still make the movie fact slips that have, like, all the new releases and shit in them in the same fucking stands. The same, like, little slip stands that you pull them out of. And then we go into the theater, which was exactly like theaters that I used to see stuff in with my dad growing up, right down to the really sticky floor. Unnervingly sticky floor. <laughs> I wasn't unnerved by it. I pretty much I... figured what it was. <laughs> Soda. Yeah, I, I was going to say I hate returning bottles because the floor is always sticky from soda. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. the grocery store. I Empty your fucking bottle. People in the movie th in the movie theaters in Springfield were really glad when they stopped selling Airheads because those would, people would stick those to the oh. floor. It's like severed tongues all over the floor. <laughs> but um, I, I, <laughs> it's too bad Dave isn't also here. I know Dave was like dreading this movie. Really? For like nitpicky ass reasons. Like it doesn't look exactly the same as the other animation. You know what? I, I, like, actually, they do a really good job, a fucking good job, of modernizing it, yet still paying a shit ton of fucking respect to the original animation. In between, like, actual 2D animation, like in comic strip form, popping up throughout the movie, and plus the fact that, yeah, it's by all accounts 3D animation, but still, they still look like the Peanuts characters. They don't look like that, um, <laughs> that realism drawn oh, yeah. Charlie Brown thing, which is one of the greatest things ever. <laughs> if I, I'd pop that up right now, but maybe I'll make that like the still shot or something. Or are you gotcha looking up cover. realistic Charlie Brown? Because fuck yeah, this is just, oh God, this was like my profile picture for so long on Facebook. Um... <laughs> If so, I, I, I really think Dave would end up liking this movie, unless he's dead set against thinking it sucks just because the animation is different. Um, the movie really... It, it does a really good job on hitting on um, the very common things from some of the Peanuts movies and also uh, the strip as well, whereas you've got Charlie Brown's crush on the red-headed girl, Realistic which is... Charlie Sheen, man. Realistic Charlie Sheen. <laughs> what that looks like. Oh, it's a shot from him from Men at Work. Realistic Charlie Sheen mask. Oh, oh, there. Yeah, there's Charlie Brown. I, I know what he looks <laughs> Scary like. Scary Charlie Brown. I don't need the side by side comparison. <laughs> See, he could have looked like this. Which would have been amazing. I want to see what all the other characters look like drawn like that. <laughs> but the movie's got the the main plot of the movie is Charlie Brown. He's got a crush on the redhead girl, and really the arc in the movie is he just wants to work up enough nerve to talk to her. But it's got he gets advice from Lucy at the psychiatric stand. He got Snoopy getting thrown out of the school and them screaming no dogs allowed at him. He got Snoopy and Woodstock interludes and also appearances from, like, the other Woodstocks. Um, the kite-eating tree, uh, them singing Christmas Time is Here. 
they actually work in quite a bit, so much so to where it seems like they've gone through an entire school year in the course of a week. <laughs> like one minute it's Christmas and at the end of the movie it's time for summer vacation. Which looks like they went to like Rydell High because there's a carnival going on right outside the school. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something that only happens in movies? Like where it's the last day of school and there's a carnival outside? <laughs> Did that in Daria. Uh, I didn't watch Daria. I watched Beavis and Butthead. So it was the last day of school and we went out and rolled around in the mud and watched TV. <laughs> As Beavis and Butthead people do. <laughs> Such as myself. My school was super late. We, the only interesting thing in town was the McDonald's and so everyone would go to McDonald's and throw shaving cream at each other. <laughs> right on. Is that a thing that happens in other schools, or is that just... Didn't that happen in, like, that, that almost happened in Dance and It's On, where they're throwing shit at each other inside of the restaurant? I just love that, like, it's like an instant reaction. Like, mm. throws ice cream, everyone is throwing ice cream. <laughs> It's it's appropriate that this movie is called The Peanuts Movie, because it really is... Uh, pretty much an ode to really most of the things that you'd expect out of from seeing a Peanuts movie. It really feels like, um, I hesitate to say greatest hits because that sounds like I'm knocking it because they really do work in all of this stuff into a plot that doesn't seem like, oh, it's just paying fan service and that's it. Yeah, a lot of stuff in this movie is totally fan service, but it does work itself into the plot. It doesn't seem like it's just gratuitously throwing in the, thrown in there just to make a reference out of it. It doesn't seem like that. Like it, it, it really does like go, it really does go along with the entire plot of the film. Um, my favorite, I grew up watching these movies, um, and my favorite, when I was a kid, I remember my favorite one was Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown. I'd say the best one on, uh, objectively speaking, is a boy named Charlie Brown. Um, I loved, uh, Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back, like, for that weird, creepy chateau, and, uh, Snoopy and Woodstock listening to sad music on the jukebox and drinking root beer. <laughs> <laughs> Snoopy Come Home is as fucking depressing. If I want a good cry, I'll watch that. That's what the entire movie is, is people crying and Snoopy getting abused by his brief owner. <laughs> <laughs> that girl who finds him and puts a fucking rope around his neck. I do have on DVD at home one of the shorts about Charlie Brown and the girl who has cancer, and it's called Why Charlie Brown Why. I've seen that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uplifting. <laughs> did you grow up watching a lot of this? I did, yeah. I mean, um, I think like the first ones I watched were probably just the holiday ones because they were oh, always on yeah. TV, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I watched them sometimes. Um, Every year we watch uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, the original one, not yeah. that shit with a rerun. Yeah, no, I, I watch that one pretty much every year, and, like, it's the Great Pumpkin. Yeah, one. Great Pumpkin. We would always skip the Thanksgiving one. Yeah, I never liked that one. <laughs> yeah, me either. I never liked the Thanksgiving I, one. When, uh, when I was younger, like, my cousins would always come over, and we would watch the Thanksgiving one, and that was kind of cool, because I'm, I'm way younger than my cousins, so mm -hmm. I was always just like, I'm involved. <laughs> For thanks, I don't, I never really had, like, a specific thing I would watch on Thanksgiving. Halloween, yeah. Christmas, yeah. A couple yeah, other, other than, holidays, like, the parade, maybe. Yeah, yeah I, I guess, like, I'd have the parade on in the background. I wouldn't, like, hardcore watch it. I don't watch football on Thanksgiving, because I don't, like I don't watch football. football ever, so yeah. I don't um, really make an exception for Thanksgiving. When I was in my early, mid-twenties, some of us used to get together and smoke pot and watch Blood Freak. He's going around with a fucking turkey head and killing people. <laughs> sure! <laughs> watch the trailer for Thanksgiving, that'll take you about three minutes. <laughs> um, so, th I dug this, because like it really does... Like the best of Charlie Brown stuff, I mean, it hits on it. It hits on things that can kind of remind you of some stuff from being that age, such as like getting the first crush you have on a girl that you're in school with, and maybe being too nervous to talk to her, or wondering if someone you like would even acknowledge you or even knows that you exist, or 
trying to do stuff anything really like in this movie you know flying a kite doing the book report dancing things like that um trying so hard to kind of do something and then just being kind of paranoid that you're really really gonna fuck it up and and <laughs> charlie brown you know he um gets so much shit and everything but to truth be told he probably is the most popular kid in school <laughs> yeah they all know his name they all say he's he's like norm he walks into a room they all scream out his name um <laughs> and when something good is happening to charlie brown like yeah lucy's gonna be shocked and like bitchy about it but everyone else really kind of rallies behind charlie brown you know there's a squirrel over here having just the best time and i can't stop a gorilla a squirrel oh <laughs> ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> gorilla you blockhead <laughs> it starts making snoopy sounds I want a dog that makes Snoopy sounds. Snoopy makes like the cutest little noise. I still think Lloyd makes more noise than Snoopy. Oh yeah, he probably does. <laughs> um, and this movie has a lot of Snoopy in it, which is great because Snoopy's the best character. So. And Woodstock. I really yeah. Like Woodstock. <laughs> there's there's a lot of interludes with Snoopy versus the Red Baron, um, because they're Snoopy is while all this stuff with Charlie Brown and the redheaded girl are going on uh snoopy is kind of there's a simultaneous thread going on which snoopy is using charlie brown's experiences with the redheaded girl to as as inspiration to kind of come up with his own with his own work of fiction because he's he's discovered a typewriter and so he's created this story about himself versus the red baron and he's got to save fifi who he has an actual picture of. I thought that was kind of interesting. Because mm -hmm. um, in, I, it seemed like he like made her up, but then when he's like crying on Schroeder's piano, he's got like her actual yeah. scarf and a she, picture. She of really her. does exist. She was a real World War One pilot. So he's in love with Fifi and is trying to save her and trying to impress her by flying alongside of her, but then also has to defeat the Red Baron. Um, really funny stuff like that like it's you know i i would have loved the shit out of this when i was a kid but it's just, oh, it's a too. it's a really uplifting film it isn't just like a bunch of people giving charlie brown shit and him getting embarrassed by it it really isn't um there's really nothing awkward in this film necessarily like it's it's easy to it's very easy to root for charlie brown like you root for more than you're just sitting there feeling sorry for him <laughs> <clears throat> especially after uh oh man he he just he thinks he got the highest grade on the test like man this is gonna really bum him out when this happen when this turns out to not be the case especially after he lost the spelling bee in a boy named charlie brown <laughs> i like just snoopy appearing in things in random things um whether it's woodstock's nest or the mailbox or anything like yeah him appearing in woodstock's nest was probably my favorite shot of the whole thing because mm -hmm. like uh what i don't even remember what woodstock is doing but he just kind of like rises up out of nowhere mm -hmm. shushes him and then goes away <laughs> he does that again when they're in the library and they're sitting there reading and snoopy just peeks up and shh and goes back down because he's intensely reading this book <laughs> um and Charlie, there's a part where Charlie Brown, the redheaded girl is gone for a week, so Charlie Brown is trying to impress, he, he's partnered with her to do a book report, so she's gone, so he wants to impress her by doing the entire book report himself, which means he wants to read the smartest book that you could read, which is War and Peace, so Charlie no, Brown. obviously Leo's Toy Store. Leo's Toy Store by War, War and Peace. Peace. <laughs> Honest mistake happens to the best of us well i mean it was it was peppermint patty's mistake technically because she wasn't she listening did. to marcy talk well she did technically get a hundred on that test by drawing a smiley face yeah i never fucking worked when i did that shit it just reminded me of that thing that went around online for a while about like um the dude who uh picked like all c on the test and it but worked it was a, no it was a true false test so a was true and b was false and he failed so what did he do it. just write in c and circle it no 
on like a scantron, like a multiple choice. Oh, oh, okay. I get what you mean. Nice. So, oh, sorry. I thought you meant like it was just like question and then true, <laughs> false, and he just wrote in C and circled it. Oh, no. I'm not falling for this one again. Each <laughs> one of these is a trick question. Did you notice what Peppermint Patty's score was when they put... Because I figured that's where it was going, because I thought I saw them, like, write their names on the different paper. Hers was the very bottom. <laughs> so Charlie Brown got dead last? Yeah. What was the one name on there that was just numbers? Did you see that? Yeah, it was, like, <laughs> SC206. <laughs> well, there's a robot in class. Or maybe that's Snoopy. Or no, it was... I thought maybe it was supposed to be a reference to Charles Schultz because it was CS and then a number. Oh, okay. All right. I, I just saw that and was like, "That's." I, I'm sure that's a reference to something, but I don't know what it is, but yeah, that's kind of funny. Yeah, I, I was trying really hard to read it. It, it. it was CS something. It Maybe it wasn't 206. It was, it was CS and then a number, so I assumed that was a reference to Charles Schultz. Um, Cinema snob, obviously. Her, this girl's name appears to actually be Little Redheaded Girl, because that's <laughs> what she's written as on the test score. <laughs> nice. And when he takes her name out of the thing, he's like, Little Redheaded Girl. Did Charlie Brown, like, he just signs his name and just writes Blockhead. <laughs> um, I, there's, a really there's a really clever sequence in it where uh, it's Snoopy again fighting the Red Baron, but it's it's splicing it in with what's going on in Snoopy's head versus how this is actually playing out in reality. So when he thinks he's like underwater, he's actually like in the bathtub with Franklin. Um, when he thinks he's crawling across like wire over a bridge, he's actually hanging on to the Christmas lights hanging down from Peppermint Patty's house. <laughs> She's like calling Charlie Brown like, your weird dog is here again. Yeah, your weird dog is here the best dog. I can only imagine this is just the stuff that goes on in Lloyd's head. <laughs> yeah, and then, the, and then, um, he, like, goes into, um, I think it's supposed to be, like, a bar in his head, and he's, mm -hmm. like, really sad because he didn't get her, and he starts, like, crying on the piano, and then it shows that it's Schroeder yeah. playing the piano, but he, he, like, uh, is holding a picture of Fifi and like her scarf and then mm -hmm. he starts crying on the piano in this bar and then it cuts back and it showed her being angry that he is crying on his piano but mm -hmm. he's still holding the picture in the scarf so Fifi is real? Yeah. Oh, she's totally real. <laughs> <laughs> like as ace World War One pilot. Fifi the dog. <laughs> I'm not even sure if she was, like, also a world... Like, she just seemed to be, like, taking pictures of shit. I think she just happened to also be a She was a, a photographer. Pilot. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go right along with that Secret Life of Pets movie that's coming out. I... Man, that sucks that that's coming out in the summer, because it is only November, and I get that fucking trailer in front of every goddamn thing I go see, and it doesn't come out for, like, six more fucking months. It does have Jenny Slate and Hannibal Buress in it, though. Oh, the so. cast is fantastic! <laughs> the movie might be perfectly fine. Every I'm just sick of that, that trailer. trailer. I try to figure out who Hannibal is playing, and I cannot figure it out. I know Jenny Slate is the fluffy white dog because oh, i would okay. recognize her voice anywhere she's tammy yeah <laughs> you mean <laughs> from bob's burgers oh um she's also mona lisa i thought you confused mona lisa with tammy at first i was like those are two oh, different parts no <laughs> uh, on bob's burgers she's tammy the popular girl oh okay the one with the side ponytail yeah um <clears throat> I see a Siamese cat That's in the what trailer. I watch every Thanksgiving. Bob's Burgers has really good Thanksgiving episodes. It's like the only show where I really, really enjoy their Thanksgiving episodes. The, the one, one where Bob kept having to buy a Thanksgiving turkey and the guy thought that he was hitting on him was funny. Yeah, the the most recent one is really good, too. The one where, like, uh, the turkeys are all, like, really fucked up because they were keeping them with geese. Mm -hmm. Um, And... Uh, the family wanted to go to the wharf for Thanksgiving instead of having Thanksgiving dinner, so Bob gets really, really drunk and ends up, like, arguing with a turkey baster. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, and did... it has the twins and regular-sized Rudy for no reason, which is amazing, because those are my favorite characters. <laughs> Why do they call you regular-sized Rudy? Look at me. Touché. <laughs> oh, we get to see, uh, what Pigpen looks like when he gets clean. Yeah. 
Do I know you? <laughs> yeah. The girl doesn't even recognize him. Um, I would like to see where the... I, 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 this is, I think, one of the best... I think it's one of, by far and away, one of the better kids' movies this year. Oh, um, definitely. But I am I am curious to see where it goes beyond this, because, like, it's been since... 1980 was the last was Bon Voyage Charlie Brown I think so, and that was the last like that. theatrical one um and so it's been that long since that movie 35 years I I I hope they do more of these because it's since it's been 35 years it's cool we have this one that pulls at all the heartstrings and touches at the moments that you expect it to after there's you know, it's been so long since there's been one of these movies. Yeah, I got it, genuinely choked up when it had Schultz signing his name at the end. Oh, I was getting choked up when he finally was talking to the girl at the end, and she was oh, talking was about too, yeah. that he's not a failure. You know, he's a, it, like I said, this this really is one of the sweetest movies I've it's seen so all year. Cute. I uh -huh. I got weirdly choked up when uh, it, it's like it's not. I don't even think it's supposed to be one of those moments that gets you choked up. It was just so fucking cute when like, uh. Like, uh, Snoopy keeps having to, like, rescue people because they're falling out of planes. Yeah. And Woodstock does, but he can fly, so mm. he's, like, flying along, and then they, like, go back, and, like, Woodstock's really exhausted because he's just been flying in, like, one spot for so long, and Fifi just, like, takes him, like, out of the sky and, like, just, like, pats him on the head. I don't know. It was cute. No, I like, you know, what? one of my favorite gags in a lot of these movies is that so many characters, when they're walking or talking, their eyes are shut, and they, like, kind of miss some things. Like in, um, uh, one of my favorite gags, this is such a throwaway thing, but it makes me laugh, in Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, when they find that cabin, uh, when the boys find the cabin, and then the girls happen upon it, and they peppermint patty knocks and charlie brown answers and he just goes yes can i help you he doesn't notice it's them because his fucking eyes are shut <laughs> <laughs> chuck it's me it's me chuck um and then they fucking kick him out of their own cabin um fuck so then like in, in this there's stuff like that that happens like woodstock on a gazebo with his eyes shut and gets caught up in linus's blanket and charlie brown walking with cupcakes talking to himself his eyes are shut and snoopy is appearing every which way from his hat from behind him from, from, around, a, mailbox. from a mailbox to eat all of the cupcakes there's, he saved him one. He saved him <laughs> one. He still had the green icing around his mouth. There's a lot of Snoopy in this, which is so cool. Um, there might be just as much Snoopy in this as there is Charlie Brown. Yeah. <laughs> I'm totally down with that. Um, the best Charlie Brown movies really, really do balance those two. Because, like, in Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, where you have, um, you know, the... The, the kids versus the bullies, but then you also have Snoopy just on his tire with a sail out of it. <laughs> <laughs> did you, uh, did you like the other movies at all? Or did you, have you seen all, there's four? I, I don't think it's, what are they? The Boy Named Charlie Brown, where that's, that one's great. Like that one, uh, it, that one has like him on uh, it starts out with a baseball game and then him building a kite and it getting caught up in the tree. Uh, the kind of main plot in it is that he is entered in a spelling bee. I think I've seen that one, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of little things. Like, it's a really ensemble flick. There's a lot of little things that go on in it, like Linus loaning uh, Charlie Brown his blanket for good luck. But then it's it's weird. It's like somebody going off of drugs, like cold turkey, because <laughs> Linus has the fucking shakes and yeah. is, like, fucking miserable. Oh, God, I haven't and seen that one in a really long time. It's but Yeah, great. I've definitely seen that one. Yeah, that one's, that one's, objectively speaking, is probably the best one. Um, there was Snoopy Come Home, which is I've just sad. One, yeah. uh, is that the one with no dogs allowed? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow, oh, no dogs allowed is great. They do that in this movie. They don't do the song. They don't. I do... wish they did the song. I was waiting for it. Like they don't do. Unless I missed it, they don't do the football thing in this movie either. Like that was. No, there's a. When he sees that someone is moving in, he's like, um, he's like, finally, like I have a completely clean slate. No one will know about all my failures. And then he like oh, has like a thought shows. bubble, and it does yeah. have the the football mm. part. But it's got him getting the baseball. And baseball knocking all of his clothes off. Yeah. Um. They do that in Boy Named Charlie Brown. Uh. The Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown, which had the 
kicking disco theme. I haven't seen that one. Oh, that's where they go to summer camp. Like, so at the end of this movie where it's like, it's summer vacation. I was like, oh, that would be kind of neat if this movie ends where <laughs> Race for Your Life Charlie Brown begins. Um, Race for Your Life Charlie Brown is they all go to summer camp and they're... Uh, facing off against these bullies and the the main plot of it is this it's this river rafting race through like I don't know what fucking kind of summer camp this is it's through like the fucking mountains <laughs> and damn like <laughs> lucky to be alive by the end of this movie and like the bullies cheat and they have like a fucking motorboat and they have like fucking mad cat from uh Inspector Gadget, who's like, like, like that, and then there was Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and Don't Come Back, where they're part of a student exchange program, and so like, they a, a few of them go to uh, France and are staying in this like creepy chateau that's owned by a guy who hates kids. It's the only one where like the humans actually, or the, the humans, the adults actually talk. Oh. Okay. Um, which is a little jarring, but it, that's still a really good movie. Um, and, uh, um, oh yeah, that one thing, if there was one thing jarring about this movie, it was whenever some kind of like, like modern ish music would pop up in it. Yeah, at the dance, there was a little bit of that. Yeah. I think one of my favorite, um, I, know, I liked a lot about this movie. I feel like I'm like my favorite scene like 20 mm. times now, but, um, there's a part where, uh, uh, the teacher says something, and one of the other one of the other characters is like, "What did she say?" <laughs> oh like, yeah. I mean, it's supposed to be because he's like too far away mm -hmm. from the. Uh... Oh yeah, no, he's like. Um... Oh god, I can't even remember the exact context of the scene. But the teacher says something, and Charlie's like, "What did she say?" And Sally has to tell him. Um, mm -hmm. It's supposed to be he's like left the classroom too much yeah. at that point. But I, I just found that kind of amusing because no, you, that that's, was funny. That's like almost every time an adult talks, someone has to be Ooh, like, yeah. "What do you mean this, this, this?" You, you mean she's gone to the bus stop? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and it's leaving right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. By the way, it was very nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, the, the humans actually talk, and in Bon Voyage, or, uh, humans, the adults, sorry. The actually, children aren't human beings. <laughs> tell me about it. Um, actually talk in Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, and like, it's, it does an in a good job of more or less being in a very non-specific time period in this movie. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's no, like, iPhones or... <laughs> no, thank God. Which, I mean, to be fair, like, uh, Race for Your Life, Charlie Brown and Bon Voyage, Charlie Brown, were obviously the 70s, or 1980. I, I'm pretty sure Bon Voyage was 1980. Um, yeah. I mean, like, they don't... Um... Other when there's other than when there's a couple of modern songs that pop up, like that was a little yeah. Jarring. I mean, in fact, they specifically use like corded phones because yeah. I, I, now that I remember, like, uh... Sally like hands him the phone and he like gets really like discombobulated because mm. he thinks it's gonna be a little red-haired girl and it's peppermint patty and like yeah oh, he just kind of like ends up like after she hangs up he like can't get out of the cords uh. he just kind of stands there like listening to yeah. the dial tone <laughs> um, it's not as weird as like in the trailer that played the who yeah <laughs> like Bob, which actually that was kind of funny on our way back it started playing Bob O'Reilly on the radio yeah, <laughs> yeah the the dance had a, a vaguely modern so, I mean it wasn't like the Great Gatsby where it had like Lil Wayne songs but like, and it wasn't like uh the nut job uh oh my god she's talking to me Wolf them Gangnam style like <laughs> what the fuck I haven't seen the nut job oh they do that in the nut that, the nut job lit this movie it doesn't I feel like say the what in front of us is going to very slowly he's, back into he's us he's trying very hard to knock this camera off <laughs> um the nut jo this movie it, it doesn't say what time period it's taking place in but the nut job did the nut job is literally taking place in the 50s oh okay um in which there's one he's like that's what we're gonna do we're gonna steal these nuts kind of style <laughs> ah. well yeah the 1953 hit gone style oh yeah um when we're importing all of the Korean hits on the radio. <laughs> um, at the end of that movie, it plays the song again on the ending credits, and they also animate Psy into it. I mean, 
I feel like the ending credits are more like outside the realm of the movie. Like I can not I mean, when it also was, does that shit within the movie. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like if it only happened in the ending credits, I'd be like, but. Mm-hmm. In the actual movie, when it's specifically supposed to take place in the 50s, that's strange. Yeah, and I think there's a nut job too that they're making. Because thank fucking God. Maybe Norm of the North will be so success- successful and we'll get a sequel to that. No, like. It, I haven't heard anything about that. I saw. We've a gotten a couple of it. trailers for it. It looks fucking bad. Um. I. I'll show you the trailer when we get back. Okay. But, um. No, I I like to see, like, because this kind of feels like, you know, this generation's a boy named Charlie Brown in which you have very familiar stuff from the comic strip also appearing in the movie. So it'll be cool to see where they go beyond this, whereas the other movies eventually drifted into their own thing. Like, you know, they're river rafting or, you know, they're going to France or things like that. <laughs> I'm curious to see, like, you know, where it goes, what places it'll go beyond yeah, this. I hope, I hope it gets more. Is it, is it like, confirmed there's going to be more than this? If this movie does well enough, I'm sure. Okay. Like, Blue Sky gave four movies to Ice Age. Yeah, okay. I'm sure if this movie does well, there will probably be another one. Um, I hope there is. I hope Dave goes to see it and likes it and isn't a grumpy old Dave again. <laughs> I'll defend Dave, though, on... on uh, He gets a lot of shit from people saying, like, Oh, good, so Dave's here not liking another movie again. To be fair, I send him to the worst movies. <laughs> I liked the comment that was like, I'm so glad you guys aren't millennials complaining about everything. <laughs> you guys do realize I'm like in my early 20s, right? Like, I am millennial as shit. I am technically Generation X. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, thanks for ruining the economy. <laughs> oh my god, one of my favorite memes is Old Economy Steve. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Saved up enough money at the lemonade stand, retires peacefully. <laughs> I love this guy. Ah, uh, the way things used to be. <laughs> oh god, there's another one that's like, um. Oh god, I can't remember. I don't know if it's old economy C or not, but it's like, um. It's like, when I was in school, I could work a minimum wage job and go to college, and it's like, like minimum wage jobs paid six hundred dollars an hour. That's college co- costs I've seen a that. dime and a piece of string. <laughs> That's old economy, Steve. Okay. Like, didn't decided not to go to college. CEO of his own company. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, this guy had it easy. I wasn't sure if it was old economy Steve, but it's it supposed was. to be like him talking to someone from this generation yeah. too. Okay, I've I've, I've seen like, that one before. Is it? It's like a picture of like a yearbook photo or something. Uh, yeah, it's a dude's like yearbook photo. He's wearing okay. this kicking fucking '70s shirt. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yep. That one's one of my. Favorites. I've never seen it referenced by name. I just see it. I'm pretty. It's old. I'm pretty sure it's old economy Steve. It's old economy. A name. I'm. I'm pretty sure it's. I think it's Steve. Um, Steve sounds about right. There's also scumbag Steve though. Um. Old economy Steve. Scumbag Steve's dad. <laughs> probably. <laughs> um. All right. So. Long story short. Uh. This is a damn good fucking movie. You so should really, really fucking cute. go see it. it. It'll put you in a good mood. <laughs> and and it, uh, if we're wrong about it being old economy Steve, then don't worry. We'll have looked it up by the time we press pause on here. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll be back. Uh, oh, man. We'll be back when... Did that go out? No. Oh. It's still there. I don't know how it got darker. Weird random so we better get out of here before the car explodes we're gonna go see the 25th anniversary of home alone in a couple of days though so that'll be a patreon video see you then